Isang mapagpalang araw sa bawat isa and praise the Lord for giving us another day of the week, this Lord's Day, to gather as one church, as one family. And if you have your Bibles with you, kindly open it with me sa Psalm 70 verses 1 to 5. And let us read. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. O God, make, ha make haste to help me. Let them be put to shame and confusion who seek my life. Let them be turned back and brought to dishonor, who delight in my hurt. Let them turn back because of their shame, who say, Aha, aha! May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great, but I am poor and needy. Hasten to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. O Lord, do not delay. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, and we praise you, Lord, for giving us this day this, as one church, as one family, to gather together in worship and hear your word. Lord, as we come to you, may you search our hearts. May you forgive us our sins, Lord God. And may our, our praises, may the preaching of your word bring glory to your name. May all things na gagawin po namin ngayon today, Lord, be acceptable in your sight. May you bless our time together, Lord. May you open our spiritual ears and our spiritual eyes. And may we respond to your word with gladness in our hearts. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
As we give to the Lord our offering, uh, let us be reminded of what was written in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 9. And this reads, The point is this, Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. As it is written, He has distributed freely, He has given to the poor, His righteousness endures forever. Giving to the Lord for the work of the ministry is a matter of the heart. And we must have a willing heart and a cheerful countenance in giving our offering to the Lord. And God promises abounding grace to us so that we may continue to increase in good works. In our current situation, there are three ways we can continue to give to the Lord. First is through online deposit to GCF is Inc. BPI current account number 4091-0042-03. Second is through GCF East PayPal account at gcf-east.org slash give slash. And third will be to visit our church and drop your offering in the offering box. Our church is open during Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Maraming salamat po. Hi everyone, welcome to our worship celebration. I'm happy that you could join us as we worship the Lord. We now come to a psalm that I've been meaning to study with all of you since I was in the States or almost got stranded in the States nung pagboom po ng coronavirus outbreak. It is a very timely psalm because it deals with trouble. In fact, we would be reading later, sa pagbabasa po natin maya, the word, the 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 actual word pestilence. That is why some say this is a psalm for a time of plagues. It is indeed a psalm that speaks of our time. Consider these words in verse five: terror by night, arrow by day. Verse six: pestilence. 
Some say plague, destruction. Verse 7, a thousand may fall. Ngayon, hindi natin alam ang historical background na, ng psalm. We don't even know who wrote it. Some say it's Moses since it comes right after the psalm of Moses, psalm, psalm 90. Some say it's David because it shares some of the themes and phrases of Psalm 27 and Psalm 31, psalms that Moses wrote. But there can be little doubt about the tone of Psalm 91. It is talking about trouble. It is talking about conflict. It is talking about warfare, struggle, fighting. It is a song that conveys an atmosphere of daily opposition. Daily attack from an enemy. Sino man ang sumulat nito, or whatever the occasion was when, when he wrote this, I think we would all agree that this speaks to our situation right now. Because we are in a time under a threat by something called the coronavirus. Di po ba? As I record this, um, there are almost 17 million active cases already of COVID-19 in the world. And as of this recording, 89,000 na po ang cases ng COVID sa Philippines. And, and because of this plague-like concern, we all seem to be hanging by a thread, di po ba? It, it's a time of, of confusion, apprehension, of fear. Never has a single letter matter so much for almost everyone in the country. Tama po ba? From GCQ to ECQ. Diba? We're all hang we're all it seems like we to be sitting at the edge of our seats. And and what a difference one letter makes nowadays. This is a psalm by the Israelites. Talking about times of distress, times of difficulties, times of tragedies indeed. But consider these words as well. As we listen and read the Psalms, verse 1, shelter, verse 2, refuge, verse 2, fortress, verse 4, refuge, verse 4, shield, verse 9, refuge, verse 11, guard, verse 15, rescue. Psalm 91 then teaches us what a believer should do in times of trouble. It is also important to note that as we listen and read together the psalm, that, that there seems to be three movements. Kaya andali po nating makita yung outline eh. There are three movements in this psalm. In verse 1 and 2, we would hear the, the psalmist and, and sharing with us his convictions. We would hear kung paano pinagkakatiwalaan ng, ng, ng writer ang Panginoong Diyos. And you would see the personal pronoun I referring to the writer, referring to the psalmist. I think that's the first movement. In verse 3 to 13, we would see this writer addressing someone in this section as he transitions from the pronoun I to the pronoun you. In fact, nakaka Manghang isipin na he uses a singular personal pronoun you. He's talking to an individual. Each individual listening to him personally, singularly. And in this section, we would see the psalmist teaching, exhorting. And in verse 16, 14 to 16, we would hear God speaks. So let us consider these movements. As I now invite you to read with me, if you have your Bibles, open your Bibles to Psalm 91. This is the word of the Lord, Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions. And under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. 
a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and, an, and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer. Answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him sal my salvation. Psalm 91, the word of the Lord. Shall we come to the Lord now in prayer? Lord, we come to a passage that needs your illumination, needs for us to listen to you, the leading of the Holy Spirit. We pray that we would not go to the left nor to the right as we rightly divide your word. Kindly give us um, good observing eyes and listening ears as we ponder upon your truth. May we be embraced by your truth, Lord. Your word is truth. And more than information, Lord, added to our knowledge, we pray that you give us wisdom, wisdom of the heart, that we would embrace truths in this beautiful psalm for us to live them out in our time today. Teach us, Lord, and preach to our hearts. This is our heart's cry. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and Amen. Friends, we live in difficult times. There are many who are concerned, many who are afraid. Hindi natin alam hanggang kailan ang quarantine. And some are suggesting that we should all move to a stricter quarantine. You heard the news that they might be saying that they might include the face shield to be part of our new normal, of our new um, get up, bukod sa face mask. There are those of us who are concerned about how this would affect our kids. I'm concerned. We live in difficult situations indeed. I'm not at all saying that we believers should not fear, hindi dapat tayo matakot. But as believers in Christ, we should cultivate biblical convictions. We should do away with unhealthy fears. Fears that cripple us. Fear, fears that seem to say the Lord is not in control. Yes, we are concerned. Yes, we are afraid at times. But we should not be, of all people, be afraid as if we don't have a God who is in control. We should cultivate a healthy fear of the Lord that shows itself up with, with, with the way we live, especially in trying times. I, I remember... Proverbs 29, 25, speaking to my heart. Let, let, let me read it to you. Proverbs 29, 25. The fear of man lays a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is safe. This verse is saying that the contrast to the fear of man and other situations and, and dangers of the world is trust in God. Ang kabaligtaran ng pagkatakot sa tao, anumang pangitain o pang pangyayari sa mundo, ay ang pagtitiwala sa Diyos. That those who fear God, trusts God. And this is what we would see in Psalm 91. Trusting the Lord in difficult situations. Even in plague-like situations. This speaks of trusting in the Lord no matter what. In light of the truth that He is a great God, He is a faithful God. And friends, He is an amazing, great, and faithful God. We must never forget that believers in the Lord Jesus are not removed from the presence of wickedness. Hindi ba? 
In fact, our Savior prayed specifically. Remember, in His high priestly prayer in John 17, He, he prayed in verse 16, I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil one. Habang napakahirap nating unawain bakit pinanalangin ng Panginoon Diyos ito, it seems that God has planned that we continue to live in a hostile, wicked, fallen, non-Christian world system. He deliberately did not remove us from an atmosphere of opposition. Instead, He has promised to preserve us through the conflict. He, he, had, he has made possible a plan of insulation, not isolation. Listen, insulation, not isolation. God is not interested in isolating ourselves, hidden away in caves like, like hermits, but rather in our living for Him, living courageously for, for God, living on the front lines, claiming His insulation amid an evil environment. That is what we would see in Psalm 91, and I pray that we will be attentive in order for us to, to enjoy the benefits of being insulated, protected, and preserved from, from the world and, and the difficulties in them, we must live in light of Psalm 91. This morning, or today, we would be answering a question, what should a believer do in difficult situations? What you, should you do? If you're a believer in Christ, in difficult situations, in verse 1 and 2, in the first movement, we would see that we should trust in God's protective care. We should trust in God's protective care. In verse 3 to 13, the second movement, we should teach these truths to others. Yes, we have these convictions. Yes, we trust in the Lord, it, but it should not be confined to you alone. We should be teaching these truths to others. That, that is what we see in verse 3 to 13. In verse 14 to 16, we would see that we should take to heart God's promise. As we listen to Him, as we listen to God Himself speak and share promises, we should take to heart these promises. Right? So, three headings in our study today. What should a believer do in difficult situations? We should trust in God's protective care. We should teach these truths to others. We should take to heart God's promises. Let's look at the first heading. Look at verse 1 to 2. And I love how this psalm starts. In fact, Psalm 91 and verse 1 and 2 is the overarching theme of the whole song. Verse 1, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. These are parallel statements with a different nuance. And this express again the overarching theme of the whole song. The, you know the secret of survival in a diff difficult situation? It, it is to dwell in the shelter of the Most High. Manahan, right? Sa piling ng kataas-taasang Diyos. And to abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Now the word dwell in verse 1 has the meaning to remain, to sit, to abide. The term conveys the idea of permanence. The verb dwell is used figuratively to mean to live in conscious fellowship with. Draw daily strength from. Dito, we are encouraged to draw our needs from God, to draw courage, to draw uh, um, boldness from God. This requires an attitude of continual awareness of the Lord's presence and involvement in your life. But the next key word makes it even more glorious. Nakita in dwell, we see the word shelter in verse 1. This means cove or covert or, or a secret hideaway. This is beautiful. This is saying that there is a secret hiding place reserved for God's own in times of trouble. Sa previous Psalm, Psalm 90, di po ba? Sa Psalm, Psalm ni Moses, it started out describing Yahweh as the dwelling place. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Psalm 90 verse 1. But here in Psalm 91, the writer seems to take that thought further 
Moses in, in Psalm 90 spoke of the Lord as the dwelling place. Here in Psalm 91, the writer seems to accept that truth, accept that idea, but seems to be talking about the central chamber of that dwelling place. The secret place, the most secured place in that dwelling place. And that is beautiful. Sabi nga nun ng writer, mayroon daw pong lihim na kanlungan, lihim na kublihan. Hindi lang dun sa presensya ng Diyos. It's not just talking about in the shelter, but there's a secret chamber, a, 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 a secret hiding place reserved for those who seek after God in times of trouble. Now, I know that's beautiful. But you need to understand and let me emphasize that Psalm 91 is written to dwellers. Ito'y sinod sa mga mananahan. Hindi sa mga nagdadaan lamang. Listen, it promises deliverance and protection not to everyone, but to dwellers. Those who draw daily habitual strength from their Lord as they sustain an intimate fellowship and nearness with Him. There is a secret hiding place reserved for God's own in times of trouble to live in. Wag nyo kalimutan yan. We are told in the last part of verse 1 that as this close fellowship is maintained, we shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Shadow, anino. Shadow speaks of protection and care. Tinan nyo ulit yung verse 1. We see another word, that, that word abide that I mentioned, abide in the shadow of the Almighty. It means to lodge, to pass the night. It conveys a periodic rest, a, a stop over for lodging, to be in there. There's regularity, there's, there's permanence there. So what is this verse actually saying? Simply put, it says this, If we who know the Lord Jesus Christ will dwell in conscious fellowship with Him, keeping our sins confessed, keeping our sins forsaken, and walking in moment-by-moment moment dependence upon Him, we shall enjoy the benefits of living under His protective care on those occasions, on those times when, when rest and lodging are needed. If we maintain our walk with Him, we can count on Him. We can count on His deliverance during those times when it gets rough. The song continues to develop the idea of safety and refuge as we look at verse 2. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. The word refuge there is a place of rest. Yung fortress naman po is a place of defense. Do you get the picture here, friends? And notice that this does not say that the Lord will provide these things. No. Rather, it says that the Lord is these things. Ang Panginoon mismo ang, ang refuge at ang fortress. This is why our dwelling in Him is essential. It is in Him alone that we will find rest and defense. Look at that final word in verse 2. Trust. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. That word is the same word that can be found in Proverbs 3 verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. So this calls for total trust. Hindi half trust. Hindi half big. A, 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 a window washer. Working 40 floors above. The city street depends upon what? A harness to, to keep him from falling. Should he lose his balance, he trusts that, that the cable and harness will support him in an emergency. He must put complete trust in his safety equipment. This is the kind of trust our Lord wants from us. Right? Again, we're spending more time here because this is the overarching theme. This is the main idea of the song. And some of you would say, Talaga, Pastor, total trust? Total trust? 
Pero it, it's so hard not to worry. It's so hard to really trust the Lord, especially in our situation right now with the Corona scare. Notice the divine names and titles found in the opening verses. You see the word. You see the name the Most High. That's Elion. This focuses on the divine sovereignty and majesty of God over the world. You see, the name Almighty, that Shaddai, it emphasizes God's omnipotence, the, the mighty power of God. Do, do you see the word Lord, all caps? That's Yahweh. It represents God as the covenant-keeping Covenant-making, eternal, faithful God. Look at the, the name again. God, that's Elohim. This refers to the supreme God who is the creator. It's telling us that God and God alone is worthy of your trust and only He can provide complete security. He is glorious. He is almighty. He is the most high. He is faithful. He is creator. Napansin din po ba ninyo? The personal pronoun in these verses. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Verse 1 reads that those who dwell in the secret chamber, secret place of the Most High will lodge in the shadow of the Almighty. Will, will, be, will abide in the shadow of the Dear ones, you need to be close to someone, hindi po ba? To even be close to His shadow. Tama? So may I ask you, are you close to the Most High? Are you near the Almighty? Friends, the writer intentionally uses God's divine name to su substantiate His trust. In sabi niya, may, may, may inaangklahan, may pundasyon ang pagtiwala ko sa Diyos. It is based on a personal relationship with God. Can you say with the psalmist that He is your Lord, your God, your refuge, your fortress? You see, friends, such assurance is anchored on a personal relationship with the Lord. We should trust in the loving, protective, caring presence of God in difficult situations. And it starts in dwelling in Him constantly, regularly, intentionally. His presence must be our home address. Our home address. He is our everything. The psalm is declaring, I have learned that in God's presence is where I find security. But he then transitions in verses 3 to 13 to essentially say, and I want the same security for you. And throughout these verses, verses 3 to 13, there is that singular pronoun, you. Singular po yun. As if to say, each of you personally, each of you individually, each of you singularly needs to trust in the Lord the way that I trust in my Lord. And so he launches in a somewhat sermon-like exhortations here. That leads us to our second heading. What should you do in times of trouble? You should trust in God's protective, loving care. Ver the second heading, we should teach these truths to others as well. And what we see in this section is that adversity, listen, and Troubles are a reality. Kaya mahirap magtiwala sa Diyos. Listen, kasi napakarami ng hirap sa buhay. Life isn't easy, tama? And we would have trials, struggles, and adversity were, that would lead us to not trust the Lord. And so, that is what we would see in this section. But we need to be very, very careful in this section as well. Because there are those who use this psalm, take it and claim it for themselves that nothing will happen to them. Merong ang sikat na sikat na grupo sa Pilipinas na merong silang panyo na ando yung Psalm 91 na winawagayway nila as if it would be 
a an amulet, parang anting-anting or agimat, to protect them absolutely from danger. This is one of the go-to passages of those who teach health and special uh, wealth. They say that you are guaranteed a trouble-free life if you only have faith. Nothing can be farther from the truth, friends. We know that by experience, tama? In this pandemic, there are those who claim that Christians are spared from the virus. If they only believe, if they only have faith, if they only declare Psalm 91, and that is sad. More so, that is very offensive. Because I know faithful followers of Christ who got this virus. I personally know born-again Christians getting the coronavirus. I even know of some who died from it. And to say that we can claim this section to guarantee absolute protection is to belittle the faith of those who got it and to mock the God who is sovereign, who has called us to share in the glory of His sufferings. God is sovereign and is in, in perfect control of all that is happening, friends. He would cause he would cause everything to work together for good. Dipo ba? Now, as we look at this section, and we would be uh, um, kind of brief as we look at this section, notice the variety of troubles that the psalmist highlights. Those troubles that would typically happen to a Jewish person, a Jewish family, a Jewish community, those things that, that would happen to them in those days. Look at verse 3. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Ano yung fowler? Sabi ng ilan translation, trap, trappers. Fowlers are those people who trap birds. Ang sabi ng psalmist, sa kanyang panulat na ito, he has a picture of someone trying to trap, trying to capture birds. nag ng trap para manghuli ng mga ibon. Right? Pa paano ba kumilis mga fowlers? Pa paano ba kumilis mga nag-trap? They work in secret. They change their traps. They change their methods. Diba? Ultimately, ang, the enemy of our soul is a fowler. His demons are fowlers. People who are enslaved to this word, world are the fowlers of the believers. And this verse tells us that God would protect us from those fowlers. That is, if we continually take refuge, intentionally make permanent residence in God's presence. Naintindihan po ninyo? Poprotectionan tayo ng Panginoon Diyos sa mga nagtatangka, sumilo at humuli sa atin, those who uh, uh, desire to harm us, as if uh, setting a trap for birds, God will protect us from them if we continually reside in His presence. Otherwise, we are a free game. We are an easy game. Then the writer goes on and say, And from the deadly pestilence. God also protects His people in times of plagues and diseases. Ngayon, we need to be very, very careful and understand that this is a general observation of the writer. This is not at all saying that absolutely nothing bad can happen to a believer, believer in God, that even sickness would not befall us. We need to understand that neither the writer nor the Holy Spirit intended, to, intended this passage to be an absolute promise. Hindi po. This is not what some faith healing preachers claim that they can heal while quoting this scripture, or th this verse. I have been a believer for 25 years. And I know I got sick. Uh, maraming beses, di ba? Hindi, hindi naman sa, hindi ako, hindi ako nagkakasakit eh. Nagkakasakit ako. In fact, you know that I have a bad back. Right? Some of you are taking maintenance medication. Tama? This is not an absolute promise, but a general observation. The, psal the psalmist, as he writes this down, was able to point to many, napakarami, not all, 
many occasions that God healed and God spared them from diseases. This is not a promise that every believer in every circumstance would not get sick or die from sickness. Again, marami tayong alam na mga mananampal tayo ni Kristo na nagkakasakit, nagkakaroon ng mga um, di magandang pangyayari sa buhay nila. Right? It speaks of a general numerous times that God protected His people from danger. Let, let me quote James Montgomery Boyce as he, he, he comments on this. And I quote, This does not mean that those who trust God never die from infectious diseases or suffer from an enemy's plot, of course. It means that those who trust God are habitually delivered from such dangers. What Christian cannot testify to many such deliverances, right? And we have stories to tell about how God has, has protected us from danger, diba? I remember when I rushed Yana to the hospital when, he was, when she was like uh, um, a little older than one year old. Mga, a little over one year old lang siya. Nagiging, nangingitim na ang anak ko. And, and umuungol. She was blue already. And she was moaning. And she was foaming in the mouth. Bumubula mi big. All the while, we, my wife and I thought that she, she would die. And as we rushed her to the hospital, I was praying. I was praying to God. I was crying out earnestly to God for, for Him to save Yana. Yana will be turning 13 this September. We know. We have stories like that. When, when God healed, when, when God protected us from an accident, it is not that we would not get hurt. No, we live in a fallen world, friends. And we experience the consequence of sin. We have natural disasters. We have plagues. We have diseases. And these are reverberation effects of the fall. Lahat tayo apektado nito. But in God's grace, in God's sovereign grace, we experience many of His protection and provision. And we thank the Lord for them, right? That is what we see here. Hindi siya perfectly and absolute. But it is true that many occasions, God does deliver His people from pestilence. Nagpatuloy yung psalmist sa kanyang exhortation and explains how God protects His people. Verse 4, He will cover you with His pinions and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. Sa verse 4, binigyan niya tayo ng picture ng isang inahing ibon, a mother bird, protecting her, her young under her wings. I am reminded of what we have learned from Exodus. Remember that. Where God told Israel, Exodus 19, verse 4, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. And again, we marvel at this. We glory in this because that is a beautiful picture. Kasi, di ba sabi natin, ang eagle can both be a bird of prey and a bird of protection. As an eagle, God preyed on. Hindi na nalangin ha. Uh, tinugis, kinastigo ng Diyos. Uh, uh, ang inat inatake ng Diyos ang Egypt with plagues and He has protected Israel from uh, the, the Egyptians and the plagues under His wings. Napansin din po ninyo that na-mention ng Psalmist sa last portion of verse 4 na, that not only is God like an eagle who protects and defends His people, His truth, His faithfulness also serves as a shield and buckler. Shield. Ito yung protective gear ng mga sundalo noon. Right? It's large enough for, for a whole person to be protected from, from arrows perhaps No mga gera nung panahon na yon. And then he said, a buckler, some translation says, bulwark. It, it has a picture of a shield, but bigger than a shield. In fact, it, it depicts a... Uh, uh, um, a, a stronger, uh, bigger shield, it actually is a wall, a fortress, right? 
And that is beautiful because we, we see God protecting as a tender, loving mother bird. And we see God protecting as a shield. Two shields, in fact. And we see in this section, the pronoun he, it, it's put in the emphatic position. Meaning, para hindi natin mamis, he referring to God is placed in the emphatic position. Therefore, we, we can render it as he and he alone, he and no one else. Right? And that's beautiful. Nagpatuloy yung psalmist to teach wonderful truths to, to his listeners, to you and me. In verse 5 to 6, we would see the result of God's protective care. Verse 5, You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. Sabi niya, you will not fear. Having just employed the imagery of a bird protecting her young, a, a, a warrior protected by a large standing body shield and a surrounding fortress wall, the psalmist says you will not fear because he gives us hope, he gives us courage, he gives us strength. So may I ask you, are you afraid right now? No, honestly, are you afraid? You see, when God's people are struck with deep fear, it is an indication that they fall short of proper trust in God as protector, as comforter. Friends, I get scared at times, but I don't let get these fear cripple me as if God is not in control. What a blessing it is to not be gripped with fear because we know God is with us. And, and listen, and even if by God's providence, He allows us to go through difficulties and suffering, diba? to go through pestilence, and as we all are now in this pandemic, to go through difficulties, as God's children, we know that nothing is out of God's control. We would not be afraid. Look at that section again. We read, You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Terror by night, or ar arrows that fly by day. The psalm is all kinds of destruction that could come in all kinds of, of circumstances. Pwede mangyari sa gabi, pwede mangyari sa araw, sa darkness, or sa noonday. It could come as a terror, or an arrow, or a pestilence, or as destruction. Right? Anumang itsura, anumang uh, uh, porma niyan, God is able to defend and protect His people from these terrifying things. Whenever and or however it comes, God is able to defend and protect you. So you should not be afraid. Notice verse 7 and 8. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Napansin niyo yung confidence ng writer? And uh, did you see how he gives us an intimidating odds? Pero napaka-confident niyan. 1,000 against you or 10,000? This is telling us how God can conquer uh, for us any odds or probabilities. Remember, Naranasan ng Israel ito kung paanong ipinaglaban sila ng Panginoong Diyos. Remember the time of Hezekiah when, when they were being attacked by the Assyrians? Remember how scared they were? But the following day, God literally fought for them and we find 185,000 Assyrians dead. So let me ask you, madali ka bang ma-intimidate? Are you intimidated? When people are so worried about this virus, uh, are you worried? Uh, do you look at the, the statistics? You see, uh, um, the case is going up, diba? Dumadami ang mga tao. Napakarami na nagkakaroon to. And, and minsan ang ginagawa ng tao, we look at the death toll. 
right? The gano ba kalaki yung death rate? Is it 10%? Is it 5%? Is it 2%? Would you not fear pag nakita mo ah 0.2% na lang pala? Right? Dear ones, our safety is not dependent on the odds or probabilities. It's dependent on the Lord. And if the Lord wills it, He can spare you among 10,000 from, from having this virus. He can do that. He can protect you and your loved ones. But what this text is saying is that our hope, our safety, our refuge is not on the odds. Ano ba chance natin? No. Our hope is on the Lord. And listen, and if you get this virus, I, I know, ayaw natin pag-usapan yan, right? Tabu sa atin ngayon yan. And if you get this virus, if the Lord wills for you to get this virus, what, what's the worst that can happen to you? Mamatay ka? Dear ones, if we are heavenly minded, we would take that as a blessing because it shortens the journey. It makes us quicker to be in the presence of the Lord. One who dwells in God's presence understands that to live is Christ and to die is gain. What do we see in verse 8? You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. In contrast, kabaliktara ng protection ng Panginoon Diyos sa mga nagtitiwala sa Kanya, sa Kanyang mga hinirang, God has also appointed a recompense, a reward for the wicked. And we know that the wages of sin is death. Tama? So this is not a beautiful reward. And so beautifully placed here is this truth for God's people to look at, to consider. You will look with your eyes and you see the recompense of the truth. This is to encourage you. That God's justice will be served. And to, for you to carefully consider, whose side are you on? Whose side are you on? As the psalmist continues to teach his listeners, as he shares his conviction, and he wants this conviction to be theirs as well, to be ours as well, notice verse 9, and this is beautiful here. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place. The Most High who is my refuge. Again, ang context ng verse 3 to 13, uh, uh, ito'y mga exhortations or, or pagtuturo ng psalmist sa kanyang audience. As we saw the, the pronoun you, singular you, teaching you, them, truths, why, why they should trust the Lord through thick and thin. But as we Go to verse 9. It's as if the writer pauses, right? In the middle of his sermon and reminds himself of that conviction once again. Nakita niyo ba yun? Because you have made, he's talking to his audience, you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, uh, who is my refuge. And that is glorious and that is beautiful. The first half was addressed again to, to, to his audience. The singular you. He goes back in addressing himself, reminding himself that Yahweh is his refuge. Yahweh was his refuge and is his refuge. The writer was merely repeating to his audience and to himself great truths. Tinanyo yung verse 1 ng awit na ito. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Now look at verse 9. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place. Listen, since you did this, since you have embraced verse 1, now notice the result in verse 9. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High who is ref who is my refuge. Notice now what will happen to you. Verse 10. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. 
the truths that we saw mentioned in verse 5 to 8 are being repeated here. Amplification, all that safety, all that security, even in the time of pestilence, is now being repeated. Now, again, lest we be confused, this is not an absolute promise, okay? This is not an absolute promise to the believer. Because we know that there are those who believe in God who are being martyred. Hindi po ba? We, we have been looking at our devotional material, di ba? Sabi natin, the devotions that we look at, look at are written by men of God all over the world. Ano napansin niyo? There are times that we see hindi uh, uh, dinidisclose yung pangalan ng writer for security reasons. Because there are faithful followers of Christ who are going through some rough times, struggling times. In fact, to the point of them being in danger of death. This is not at all saying that this is an absolute promise by God, but a joyful observation by the writer. Listen to Poole, a, a Puritan, as he comments on this. This and such like promises are not to be understood absolutely and universally as if no truly good man could be cut off by the plague or other common calamities, which is confirmed both by other plain texts of Scripture and by unquestionable experience. Totoo yun. Hindi sinasabi nito na pag-believer ka, ligtas ka na sa napakaraming mga uh, paghihirap. The passage doesn't read, no affliction shall befall us. But take a look at your path, Bibles. Ano sabi dyan? It reads, no evil shall befall you. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. Again, hindi sinasabi na no affliction shall fall on you, but it reads, no evil shall fall on us. We can experience hardships. We can struggle. We can be in difficult times. We all are now in this plague-like situation, in this pandemic. But no evil can fall on us because God protects you and me. God protects us. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. James Montgomery Boyce gave a beautiful example of this protection. And he mentions uh, um, the testimony of Lord Craven. As we see the testimony of Lord Craven where this passage was fulfilled. And I quote James Montgomery Boyce sharing the testimony. Lord Craven, a Christian, was a noble man who was living in London when plague ravaged the city in the 15th century. In order to escape the spreading pestilence, Craven determined to, live, to leave the city for his country home, as many of his social standing did. He ordered his coach and baggage made ready. But as he was walking down one of the halls of his home, about to enter his carriage, he overheard one of his servants say to one another, to, to another, I suppose by my Lord's quitting London to avoid the plague, that this God lives in the country and not in town. No, na, nalaman ng mga uh, uh, katulong ni, nitong kasambahay ni, ni, ni Lord Craven, na uh, alis si Lord Craven para takasan yung plague na nasa London. Sabi, ah, siguro yung Panginoon ni Lord Craven hindi din nakatira, kundi din sa Ciudad, sa London. It was a straightforward and apparently innocent remark, but it struck Lord Craven so deeply that he canceled his journey saying, My God lives everywhere and can preserve me in town as well as in the country. I will stay, stay where I am. So he stayed in London. He helped the plague victims and he did not catch the disease himself. Wonderful, wonderful story, right? In God's providence, we, we saw that he spared Lord Craven. And you see, friends, in God's grace, in God's providence, he allows these promises to happen to some of his people. Not all. To some. And it gives us comfort. It gives us encouragement. Tama? 
that our God is sovereign and that He can do this if He so wills. Verse 11, For He will command His angels concerning you. Again, He's pointing to that singular individual He's teaching. For He will command His angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands, they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against a stone. It's even saying His angels, God's angels, ministering spirits, the Lord can send them to aid you, to guard you, to keep you, to bear up God's people. Now, to help us understand this, let me read to you some quotes from Adam Clark and Charles Spurgeon. The angels of God shall have an an especial charge to accompany, defend, and preserve thee and against their power. The influence of evil spirits cannot prevail. These will, when necessary, when necessary, turn thy steps out of the way of danger, way, ward it off when it comes in thy ordinary path. That's from Adam Clark. Listen to Spurgeon. Not one guardian angel. Napansin niyo yun? Hindi lang isa. As some fondly dream, but all the angels are, are here alluded to. They have received commission from their Lord and ours to watch carefully over all the interests of the faithful. Now, paano ginawa ng mga, ano ng angels dun? I don't know. Listen to Spurgeon again. How angels thus keep us, we cannot tell. Whether they repel demons, counteract spiritual plots, or even ward off the subtler physical forces of disease, we do not know. Perhaps we shall one day stand amazed at the multiplied services which the unseen bands have rendered to us. Hindi natin alam paano kumikilas ang mga angels ng Panginoon Diyos, ministering spirits to, to be with us, to protect us, to, to help us. We, we cannot know. We, we do not know. And sabi ni Spirit siguro, pagkat nasa langit, we would know. And we would marvel at God, not the angel, we would marvel at the, the Lord who sent them. Right? And so, remember, let us remember that it is God who sent this angel. The, the, these are His angels. He is responsible for giving them this charge. Diba? From God thou art to expect them. And, and for their help, He alone is to receive the praise. Some of us would, would praise angels. Some of us would call on to angels. Please stop. Please stop. Let us not be foolish in calling angels for help. Yes, this text says that God has commanded His angels to minister to us. So we should not be calling angels. We call on the Lord. Right? Now, verse 11 to 12 sounds familiar to some of us, if not all of us. Because as we read this, we are reminded of Matthew 4. What happened in Matthew 4? The temptation of Jesus Christ in the wilderness. And in verse 11 to 12 are falsely quoted by Satan when he was tempting Jesus. Remember that? God has never promised nor ever given any protection of angels in forbidden and sinful ways. Ano sabi ni Satanas? Sige nga, magpatihulog ka nga. Right? Jesus knew God's ways. And that He needs to go through suffering. He needs to, to not shortcut. He needs to go all the way. And it included suffering and death for the ultimate redemptive purpose of God. Jesus trusted God's word amid sufferings. And after the temptation, who do we see ministering to Jesus? Angels, right? This, thought, this text was twisted by Satan applied it in the wrong way because it was not used to teach or encourage but intended to deceive 
right? So, as we look at verse 11 to 12, and we understand that this, ver these verses were misquoted by Satan in Matthew 4, we see that it gives us a better understanding of what Psalm 91 is, diba? Right? We see that it does not give absolute promises for every believer in every circumstance, but beautiful promises of God's protection, comfort, and care that are specifically received and applied in the believer by the Holy Spirit if God so wills it. Look at verse 13. You will tread on the lion and the adder, and the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Wow! Naka overwhelmed naman to. What do we make of this? Again, we, sh we should not be going to lion's dens, no? Para away ng hamunan ng mga leon. Hindi tayo dapat mag pupulot ng mga snakes, right? This is not at all suggesting that. So, what is this saying then? These deadly species serve to highlight the threatening nature of the psalmist's opponents. Ganito ka babangis, ganito ka tatapang, ganito ka dangerous si mga kaaway niya. Right? The, these uh, animals, these uh, beasts were used as classic metaphors for the enemies of the psalmist. This tells us that the protection of God to his people extends beyond the general deliverance from harm. It also speaks of granting victory to his people even over opponents as strong as, uh, and as dangerous as a young lion and as serpents. As the psalmist rejoices, in the absolute security found when we trust in the Lord's protection, no matter what the circumstances are. Nakit natin, he declared his trust in God's protective care. Hindi po ba? And then we saw him exhorting others to do the same as we saw him teach these truths to others. Now in the final three verses, we hear God speak, encouraging us to take to heart his promises. Ang ibang translation nga po, kung babasahin natin itong verse 14 to 16, it is under open and close quotation marks, signifying that God himself is speaking here. And I want you to notice that Psalm 91, as we read this, last three verses, is not meant for everyone. Look at verse 14. Because he holds fast to me, in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Napansin niyo He has loved me. He knows my name. He calls me. So the protection that we have discussed in Psalm 91 is not for everyone. It's for those who are devoted to God, those who love God, those who knows God, who calls upon His name in an ongoing, intimate, personal, loving relationship. Let me ask you, do you love God? Do you know God's name in a saving kind of way? Do you call upon His name? And I'm not saying just the ca casual mentioning of His name. Are you one who is devoted to God, even and most especially in trying times. If so, this is for you. Can you look at verse 14 again? And look at the blessings in loving God. Because He holds fast to me, in love I will deliver Him. I will protect Him because He knows my name. I will deliver Him. You see, the promises and principles stated previously in the psalm is repeated once again. Diba? But this time, it's coming from God. It's, it's from God's perspective. God will protect His beloved. And I will uh, protect Him. Right? Because He knows my name. He has known my name. This once again depicts closeness. This, once again, shows 
real and intimate relationship with God, there are blessings that some believers miss out in sim simply because they are always fretting and do not trust God as they should. Dito ang sabi ni Salm ng Salmis, these blessings are for those who love God and acknowledge His name, call upon His name, and seek satis satisfaction in what He alone can provide. He shall call upon me and I will answer. God promises to answer the prayer. The prayer of those who love Him. The one who genuinely knows Him. Now the answer can not always be yes. He answers. It can be a yes, it can be a no, outright no, it can be a wait. But the point here is He will answer. I will be with Him. In the last lines of the psalm, God spoke personal and wonderful blessings over the one who loves him, the one who knows his name. I will be with him. Teka lang. A few verses earlier, we saw that he would put angels charge over us. Forget about the angels. God himself will be with us. And that's beautiful, friends. Diba? I will be with him. Blessings over the one who loves and knows God. The blessing of His presence. I will be with Him in trouble. The blessing of His protection. I will deliver Him. Verse 15. The blessing of His promotion. I will honor Him. Verse 15. The blessing of prosperity. With long life, I will satisfy Him. What is more satisfying by, uh, than, than being given long life, longer life? Again, this is not an absolute promise. There are believers who die young. A general principle and show him my salvation the blessing of preservation in, in the context of the psalmist he could be saying uh, you would see the consummation of his protecting you from these enemies what a list from God's mouth to the psalmist pen to your eyes and ears these are yours if the Lord is your Lord. The Lord says that those who love Him and those who know Him have this secure hope in Him. Do you love God? Do you know Him? Do you call upon Him? You see, friends, in the world there will be troubles. But take heart, says the Lord, I have overcome the world. God will insulate us, protect us, if He so wills. But He will not isolate us. In these trying times, know that God can protect you. Know that God can give you peace. And know that these protection and security are confined to those who are His. Those who daily, regularly take precedence and find refuge in His presence. We live in trying times, friends. Some of you may have loved ones who were very much affected by the coronavirus. Maybe you are affected by the coronavirus. Maybe you have friends or family members who died from the coronavirus. Friends, if you're a believer in Christ, you know that God is in control of everything. You want protection? You want peace? Embrace Psalm 91. Because this is what we ought to do in trying times. We trust in God's loving care. We teach others of these wonderful truths. And we take to heart what the Lord has told us. He loves you. He will protect you. He will take care of you. For the ultimate glory of the one whom you love. I pray, friends, that this psalm has ministered to your heart. As it has ministered to mine. Take heart, beloved. He is in control. He is, and He loves you, and He can protect you. 
Father, we thank you. We praise you for this wonderful psalm, this wonderful song. We pray that all hearts, all ears have truly listened to your marvelous, wonderful care. I pray that all hearts and all minds were convicted to continually dwell and make your presence our residence. May we be secured, Lord, in the truth that whatever happens to us, difficulties and all, even pestilence, you are in control and you have a purpose for everything. Thank you for teaching. Thank you for preaching to our hearts. May those who have heard have truly listened and would heed the call to embrace and trust this loving, loving God. To the utmost glory of our King, this we pray. Amen and Amen. Thank you for joining me and uh, we'll see you all next week. God bless you.